Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a fresh episode of the energy of houses and properties. And I'll just wait for Aisha to come in. And there she is. And let's see if it's working. There she is. Hello. Good Hello. morning. Hi. Good, Good morning. morning. How's the connection? Good. A little bit delayed in the video, but maybe it gets better. Because we have, we have to tell you we had some issues with the connection. So unfortunately, the replay and the, and the uh, recordings uh, uh, didn't go well last time. So let's hope this episode will be uh, recorded. So how are you? Yeah. You're um, in your new place. I do. Yeah, uh, in the tiny house now. And soon we'll be moving to this property. Um, and so I'm testing the internet here to see how it's, I think it's better. I think it's better. Um, doing well, doing well, uh, lots going on, lots of projects and serving amazing women architects and designers, helping them to birth a new way to, uh, yeah, to build the new earth and connect with the land, connect with their intuition uh, so it's, uh, yeah, it lights me up. It's, it's great. It's, it's really great. So are, how are you doing, Nikki? I, I, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. Lots of stuff happened, uh, over here, but, uh, let's discuss that, uh, on another platform, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The eclipse just passed. Uh, did you, uh, experience anything during the eclipse? Was there anything up? Like, you know, or I'm curious about um, what the eclipses are for you and if you've, um, yeah, what kind of energies you sense during these times. Um, well, actually, I've been so busy that I uh, was in a kind of a tunnel and I didn't yeah. um, take the time to be aware as I did. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah. The eclipse for me, yeah. usually with eclipse and full moons and everything, it, it doesn't really bother me. I, I notice it, but I don't let it influence me. And it doesn't have to. So you can just yeah. um, let it be uh, uh, something you, you notice. Okay, now that's full moon. Now there's an eclipse. Um, okay. And... Um, I'm not so sure about really cause and effect. You know, it's more it's more about resonancy. So because there is all these energies around, you might be tempted to resonate with it. So it will um, there will come up the same kind of energies within you, but it doesn't have to. Be. You could just mm -hmm. notice it. Instead of you know doing the whole program, all these people that that and, yeah. and, and I might um, stumble on some some uh, how do you say that in Dutch we say heilige huisjes um, sacred houses uh, you cannot throw over it's an expression in Dutch um, all these people that you can't can sleep can with that. full moon and all these things that happen with full moon and they're restless. It's not really necessary. You don't have to do that. You don't have to. Right. You could just, you know, notice it and you could use the energies instead of being bothered. Right. Right. Yeah. But it's not a popular point of view, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, absolutely. Ah, and these are opportunities. These are moments to reflect on the beauty of nature, quite frank, like just as, as simple as that. And um, during the eclipse, um, I, d I forgot it was the eclipse. And um, I didn't know. And I 
it, just a perfect example of being in tune with nature. Um, I was in the apartment that we're renting right now and I had finished some work. Yeah, I had just finished a, a client meeting. And then, you know, my, my soul wanted to move somewhere. And most of the time I want to come down to our property by the sea and I want to be like, you know, making things and looking at the construction site and moving my body. And I, I heard a distinct message. I, I was also tired, actually. I, I heard a message from the sun saying, lie down under me on the terrace. And so I went and it turns out that I, I slept under the sun during the eclipse <laughs> on my terrace. That's nice. So there you go. Whatever needed, yep. whatever needed to, I needed to be under the sun during the eclipse and I slept on my terrace. And I think that Nikki, that's also a, a really great example of how your home your space can start to become an amplifier or even a, a mediator, a communicator between nature and you. And of course, your body is the ultimate communicator. Your body and your home are not separate, as you also uh, share with us, teach us, guide us through. And, um, you know, in that moment, I felt so in tune to what my body needed. And I, I chose to stop and I chose to listen. And I listened to the, the voice of the sun telling me, take a nap under me right now. Go out onto the terrace. Don't take, don't take the mini bus down to the site. Don't move too much. And I had the most incredible deep sleep on the terrace. I, I had to take, I had to take my Ikea chair, this like lounge, all of our Alto chair, you know, this one. Um, we have another one up there, um, which I actually find quite uncomfortable most of the times. But anyway, it was perfect for sleeping. It was perfect because it's like, right, totally spine is totally relaxed, mm -hmm. head back. And I had to, to kind of squeeze it out of this small door because we're in this like apartment flat. I had to squeeze it out and um, and set it all up and, I, and then I collapsed under the sun. Yeah. Well the, done. The eclipse, so. <laughs> well done. Thank you. <laughs> so maybe we have some people watching, maybe uh, people like to add about their experience uh, with, the, with the eclipse. Um, I just was thinking about a couple of years ago, I think, I can't even remember if my daughter was born or not, but we were living in Switzerland and there was this alignment uh, and it was an eclipse with Venus. I think 11, 12, 13 years ago. And um, we decided to make it into a ritual, a ceremony in the woods. Uh, on top of the hill it was really early in the morning i think it was even around four or something and then you create a setting to use the energy of the moment this special alignment that comes by every couple hundred years i can't exactly remember but then then it's a whole different setting than being bothered by you know uh, uh, an event like that and then you are really using the energy to gain some insights or right. a specific kind of uh, meditation with a group, with each other, in nature. Exactly. Um, I remember I used to be so swayed by the full moon. And this was when I didn't have... And, and it's, nor, it's a natural unfolding, right? This is, you know, in my 20s. Um, I remember distinctly just bawling my eyes out and being very swayed by the moon. And I think that's a part of the unfolding of the adult, right? So it's natural. It needed to be that way. Um, but it's, a, it's also a sign that at that age, you don't have the um, tools to um 
to form a, a kind of a, 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 a more grounded structure in your inner being and in your body. And so what you're talking about is creating this structure consciously. Okay, this is, a, this is an important time, an important turning time in nature, whether it be, you know, the full moon, whether it be a new moon, whether it be eclipses, whether it be equinoxes, right? and to consciously gather with a group to create a ceremony around that, then, then it doesn't, um, just like you're saying, it doesn't, um, it doesn't kind of creep up from behind or from a place where you're just like, you know, I'm kind of having difficulty explaining it in words, but it's, um, you have then, a certain amount of control and consciousness and uh, to allow for the be the benefits of that turning point or um, distinct uh, moment in time in nature's cycle. Yeah. yeah. And maybe we need, you know, uh, ceremonies like that because we've lost our touch with nature mm. so much because when we're talking about full moon, it's like a breath of, I always like to see it as a breath of the oceans, you know, in a, during a month. And because we are water for a 70, 80 percent, I believe, it is impossible to not be influenced one way or another. Sure. Yeah, we're all water. We love yeah. our, our rhythm with, with nature for, for, I think, most, most people, especially when you live uh, in, in cities and all, all that. And still, there will always be a part connected because we are nature. And it's the consciousness part that uh, allows you to uh, strengthen that connection or to ignore mm. that connection. But either way, the connection is there, whether you ignore it or you strengthen it so it can benefit. Yeah. Yeah, very eloquently put, so clear. It's our choice to be aware of it or to ignore it. And sometimes we forget about it. And when, you know, when we are, and, and it's, a, it, and when the example of me going out onto the terrace and sleeping under the sun during the, the, the solstice, sorry, the, um, the eclipse is also just such a, a an amazing example of how supported we are as well by nature, you know? And if we are, if we train ourselves, cause it's actually, I realized it's, it's really through all the training I've done through um, exercising my muscle to listen on a deeper level. I think so too. Otherwise, right. otherwise you could not have heard that message or got that notch from nature yeah. just to, you know, chill out yeah. for a bit. I would have gone on my default mode, like, okay, go to the construction site. Okay, like, keep on going, you know. Yeah. Um, but um, but the, the the inner listening. Yeah. So so uh, all that training gives you now. Yeah. The, the, the capability of even, you know, when you're busy with your mind and all your programming, you've trained that listening to nature so much that you will listen anyway. So you are unaware of listening. <laughs> it's just so... <laughs> yeah, well, well it's, it's uh, optimization. Just... That's what we do with our brains, you know. If you practice something so many times, like cycling or swimming, you know, you you cannot not do right. it anymore. And you've exercised so much of being in tune with nature that you are in tune with nature, whether you want it or not. But it is the awareness part that has been trained so much because we are always yeah. connected with nature. Yeah. So even though there was a your, question here, your unaware mind 
has been trained. So your mind is not in the way. It, it reminds me of, yeah, it just really is like Jedi, Jedi training, you know, like, um, like I just I'm picturing the karate kid. Did anybody watch the karate kid when they were younger? You know, like the training, the training, the training, and then eventually you can like, you can catch that fly with the chopstick, you know, um, samurai is training. I mean, that is really what it takes, I feel. Maybe without, you know, going, you know, you don't need to go anymore to uh, a distant place and train for months and months and be separate from your family or friends or, um, although that is a choice, some people do do that to, to deepen in some kind of uh, spiritual training, absolutely. Uh, but in the modern world now, uh, I feel that we are really equipped uh, with, um, uh, it, it, actually an innate ability that you know we can connect a lot faster now but it doesn't mean that um, we don't require the training that's really important there are a lot of people right now who are jumping into doing spiritual work connecting with beings and light beings and energies and without the the proper training um, which is concerning it can be concerning because that there's there, there needs to be certain order of operations before before you do you do connect. Um, I did many years of meditate meditation work, esoteric studies, and actually I want to get back to some of doing them. Um, I feel like I've kind of come through another cycle and want to repeat some of the exercises I used to do. Um, that really. Uh, really enable this the, the 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 muscle of inner listening to be honed yeah to be honed yeah um nikki i want to answer a question that came through um what's the time of the eclipse so the eclipse was Octo if, if you're asking specifically when it was it, it was on october 25th it was a partial solar eclipse, I believe. And um, so partially, the sun was partially shaded and covered. Um, I'm not an expert. There might maybe someone in the group knows more specifically. And uh, in Istanbul, Turkey time, it was I think about 1230pm. Yeah, I think here it was around 20. 11. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've also noticed in, I've no, also noticed during this eclipse time that I've um, been um, the the energies of the eclipse have offered me an opportunity to focus on what's really important in my life. That's that's those are the themes that I've been experiencing in these few days really focusing on what's important in my life, in my business as well, which is interconnected so deeply with my life, uh, what's important in my family and my relationships and prioritizing and focusing on one, two or two things that really are important to me. Um, and my health, health is also really important as well. That's been at the forefront for the past couple weeks and it's I've brought that to the top <laughs> to the top it's really interesting that you say that because those are exactly the themes that I've been you know playing around with so there might be a common uh, theme uh, going on around yeah. this eclipse I don't know maybe someone else uh, would like to comment on that. yeah yeah but I could and if you think about, yeah, if you, if you really, if we all tune into the energy of the fall season. Now, of course, I have a client in Australia, and she just finished her spring detox. It's just so beautiful to, to witness that, right? Yeah. 
she just finished her spring detox and is entering into a, a different space. But I, I see the two equinoxes, fall and spring, to be almost like the same, the, you know, two sides of the same coin. <clears throat> uh, I do find them to be very parallel to each other, you know. Mm -hmm. Even just meditating on the wheel of the four seasons can bring up a lot for us. But if we tune into, um, you know, you and I, we are in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, I'm looking at now, you know, a lot of some of the leaves are turning yellow, um, uh, orangey. And tuning into the energy of entering into fall. Fall is about a falling away of things, right? There is a, a letting go. Right? The leaves fall to the ground. The tree lets go its leaves and allows what needs to die to die in order to bring back new life again. Right? So we're preparing to go into death. And that really requires, <laughs> it's like we can't, we can't take everything with us into the underworld. <laughs> You know, we're gonna, you know, it's like, we don't want to take that extra baggage, the luggage. Let's just take the carry on. What, what does the carry on include, right? That could be a meditation in itself as an offering to all of you who have joined to meditate on what's in your carry on luggage and do a five, 10 minute automatic writing regarding that. What, you know, what are you going to carry with you into the tr trip into the underworld? Now, when I say underworld, people might get spooked out by that. But essentially, that's what we're doing. And that's what the, the leaves are doing. The leaves are decomposing and they're given back to the earth, right? Nature, Mother Gaia is giving the instructions for these leaves to go back deep down into the earth, into the darkness of the earth, right? And seeds have been planted as well, and they're kind of hanging out in the in the dark earth as well, and they'll be preparing to to grow once again in the spring. So, what's what's in your what's in your carry on luggage? Don't take the big luggage, and if you are taking the big luggage, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've really prioritized, really prioritizing what's important to me. So we have another question. Um, can it be that an eclipse gives stress is a question from Panica. So I would say if you are not used to the energies, it could stress you out. Yes, of course. Everything new could be stressful. How do you yeah. interpret stress? Is yeah, it could again be just uh, something you witness, or you could you know do the stress, put it in your body and do the stress. It's a choice. Yeah, great, I, amazing, Nikki. Um, so it's a choice. It's absolutely a choice. Oh, I'm just seeing, I'm seeing a butterfly land on, on a plant right outside the window. So welcome, butterfly. Um, right, it was more sadness. Um, Fennekit con continues there. It was more sadness. Something that as an offering as well, uh, very much related to what Nikki is, is talking about, also is... With the letting go, or, okay, let's say this. Mother Gaia, nature, right now, is, is giving the instructions for the leaves, for the trees, for the plants, to all let go. To all let go of their leaves. It is the cosmic law. It is the Earth's law. And so... But because we're like these like separate beings with our own consciousness and we're 
most of the time we're not listening, including myself even, you know, like most of the time we're just go, 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 right? We're not, you know, we, we have a choice, right? To either be in tune with, with Mother Gaia's rhythms or not. And so when we're not totally, wait, let me rephrase it like this. Your, your sadness or your stress may be required for you to let go of some things. So I'll give you an example. I was in a sacred woman's, women's circle um, uh, connected to my, my, the, the business coaching program that I'm in. Very deep work we did on the weekend. <clears throat> and as a result of letting go of things, I developed, <clears throat> well, first of all, I, that, that weekend I got very angry. I was very pissed off, very pissed off, had arguments, um, and there was a lot of anger. And the anger accumulated in my upper chest area, and it was quite painful. Um, and, then, and then what that the process of what was going on during the women's circle allowed for that anger to be released. And then it turned into a cough. And so then the cough helped me, right? It's just so beautiful. It's so beautiful how the human body works. It's so beautiful how nature works. That cough allowed me to, through the phlegm and the mucus to spit out the anger, to spit out the frustration to spit out what no longer uh, served me, to get really, like, to get very graphic, right? Like, just like, right? And I, I'm still a bit stuffed up, but I'm in the last day of it, and I feel so much clearer. I feel so much clearer. So it's like, yeah, I did experience some stress. I did experience anger, and this was in the past couple days. But when we have what we're talking about, when we have the inner listening muscle, uh, tuned in, exercised well, then each time we're not, if, if this makes sense, each time then we're not as stressed about being stressed. Each time we're not as angry about being angry. Each time around we're not then, we're not, we're not like, um, you know, kind of, we don't lose like two or three months of our time anymore because as, as we exercise our ability to take ourselves out of our, you know, have, have the kind of observer consciousness, the calm observer consciousness, and when we're really deeply connected with nature, then we can move through these things in a much more... Um, Smooth and integrated way. Integrated is the key. Yeah. And embodied, embodied way. Does this resonate with all of you? Yeah. Hmm. Moment trying to rescue my son. Thanks. Yeah. There's, there's two things that um, I want to add to your uh, wonderful explanation. First of all, is feelings are there to be felt. And we are often a bit scared of all these feelings because they are can be really intense. But they can also be over within, I think it is one minute or so, can be done. It could take two, three months, it could even two, three decades, but it can be done in a couple of minutes. But in order to be able to do that, you have to exercise that muscle like you explained of going through it and there are all kinds of processes rituals therapies to help you do that but you can do it with little things just you know keep in mind feelings are there to be felt so go in there take some uh, 10 minutes to just go really into that feeling and you will feel better and the other thing is because resist feelings often um, and that comes back to where we spoke about uh, I think about 10 minutes ago we are programmed 
to automize our brains. This process uh, is designed to automize everything we do. So we don't like change. And if a feeling comes up, it is a change in the state of being you are at that moment. So you resist. Mm. So these are opposite forces. So you could use your mind in order to help yourself or to, to uh, force yourself to go through that with kindness and softness and a smile because you don't have to do it in two minutes. If you want to take two weeks, it's all fine. But just be aware that these two forces, there is a biological thing. This is the automation of everything you do because we need to save as much energy as we can. That's why we are designed that way in our biology. And then there's this other force that brings in all these change and all these feelings and all this whatever. And they're not working together. They're working against each other. So you have to find some kind of way to deal with that, to dance with that in order to be not as stressed as you could be about things that happen around you in nature or in, in life in general. Yeah. What a wise woman we are. Thank you. <laughs> That's so kind. <laughs> Yeah. And just tuning into this, this, the beauty of listening. I mean, we could, we could meditate and talk about the, the wonders of listening. And I'm, I'm just tuning into how I listen to you, Nikki. I'm now listening to the space around me. You know, we're building this, this new sanctuary, our home. We've got these tiny houses. I'm just tuning in. You know, without the listening, the design or the, the, the personal power place doesn't, doesn't unfold. And that includes listening to our feelings and allowing our feelings to, to be felt. Yeah. Yeah. Because your feelings are really, they're knocking on your inner temple door. <laughs> Give me attention. Give me attention. I want you to feel me because you've repressed me for so long. And our feelings are present in our homes. They're knocking on the doors. They're knocking on the windows. They're not, you know, they're knocking maybe from the basement if you have any basements. I don't have any basements here, but, you know, open the latch. Even if you take it one step further, you know, feelings come after emotion. So first there is a, a reaction, you know, there is all these hormones going, there is an energy, energy in motion. <laughs> and the feeling, that is when we add meaning to that energy, which is the emotion. So if you are able to just feel the energy and distract your mind from the meaning you give to that specific energy, it might be a lot easier to move through that specific energy. Because feeling, okay, I feel this sensation in my body and that has to mean sadness and I am sad about, and then there comes this whole story. And this is all legit. But the step from emotion, energy in motion, to feeling is mind. Mind is involved in feeling. So the more you are able to use mind as a tool instead of um, giving it um, the, the, the uh, highest hierarchy, the, the boss of your body, because you are not mind. Mind is a tool, and that requires uh, a lot of training. I love that. The boss of your body, the CEO, CEO of your body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it wants to keep us safe. Yeah. 
uh, Goddel is asking, uh, do you mean emotion is energy in motion? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Yeah, that's a beautiful way of putting it. Because it's if you attach meaning to it and you don't want to feel it because you, this energy feels uncomfortable in one way or another, you are suppressing it. And you can only do that if the mind is there. If you have no meaning for that specific kind of energy in your body, you feel a sensation in your, in your stomach or around your heart area, you could just let it, let it be and then you will move through it. But because there is all kinds yeah. of stories and meanings, it turns into feelings and they, we make them heavy because feelings have meaning and they are important. And all this is not necessary, but it's human. That's what we do. Yeah. And as you speak, Nikki, it's just, that's also, it's so important to set aside the time to do, to, to allow, allow, give your emotions plus feelings space and time. Um, we really, put, we really do set them aside, try to push them, hide them. Then they build up and build up and then it explodes into something that, you know, um, is maybe is maybe harder to uh, recover from on all levels, especially if it's affecting your family, friends, work, uh, whatever that may be. And so I I do recommend my clients, especially the ones who are property owners, to when we're designing their spaces to allocate space it could be the tiniest room it could be a little loft space it could be a, a, mo a space in your garden where there's a place you can always go to where you have the quiet um to and the safety where it feels a, like a very safe place for you to be able to um completely like let go, let you know, and um, give your those emotions space. So it, this could be anger work. This could be screaming at the top of your lungs. I mean, we were told for so long as you know, children. Oh no, that's rude. Oh no, don't do that. Oh, that's not polite. Oh, we can't do this. We can't do that. And so <clears throat> we haven't been given the skills to fully let. Uh, the wave of our emotions come to a full completion in a healthy way. Um, and so, yeah, the screaming, you know, maybe you scream into a pillow or the, um, the bawling your eyes out doing grief work, right? Um, it could be, it could be laughing, it could be like hysteric laughing. Um, whatever that may be, but that's also sacred work. And it could be, you know, somewhere where you have an altar space. Maybe it's a tree that you really love in your garden. I mean, nature is just the ultimate equalizer, balancer, integrator. Um, you know, connecting with tree spirits, connecting with rock spirits, um, and incorporating those into the design or the um, setup configuration of your home and your garden. Yeah. And you have to be it able. It can happen in so many different ways. You have to be able to, to, to uh, give yourself permission to do that. Yeah. Because we are indeed programmed. Uh, we have, we don't do that. It's not kind. All those things. So I think either find a setting in a safe space in some kind of group work where you do that or find yeah. a, a space in your home, in your family is a way or go to somewhere alone in the woods, nature. Um, nature is perfect because it doesn't have an opinion. 
So all these energies you might be feeling from people, you know, all this programming, so behave, that kind of programming, it's just not there. So you can, you know, do whatever. But the first and most important thing is that you give yourself permission to do that. And it, it can be hard. It can be really hard. I find it not easy. Yeah. yeah. And and then I come back to my, my swimming, you know, the temperature is getting colder and colder. So I dive in and I always, when I go in and then go up and then I have to scream one of those really sounds that come from here and my swimming ball with buddies always have to laugh. But I just, it, it escapes. It's not something I plan, but it's a release of energy. Yeah. So find, find yeah. a way. This is, a way for me and other people do other things they might sing which is also an expression of you know translating energies oh. or play music or yeah i recommend drumming a lot for women who feel called to the drum um i have a drum and and just drumming is wow it really starts to move move those um feel emotions and feelings and yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, indeed really, writing really or painting or any kind of expression you could do you know there are there are people i know they are knitting like crazy which is also yeah, yeah. whatever it takes yeah it's all fine but uh, again awareness is the key why are you doing it and what is your intention yes. it's like cooking with love or anger, you know, the dish comes out differently. It totally does. It totally does. Yeah. We have a, we have a comment here um, from Sylvie Bosch. So beautiful to hear. This is exactly what we are playing, exploring. Sylvia, yeah, Sylvia, so beautiful to hear. This is exactly what we are playing, exploring within our family. It didn't have a place in both our original families. Now we are exploring giving this space, play with it. Beautiful, yeah, kids know so well. It's so amazing to see. Yeah, kids know, exactly, yeah. Yep, play with it, yep. that's it. And we forgot how to play. Yeah. Yeah. Dance with it. Yeah. yeah. Now, this doesn't mean, though, to play with it on other people. <laughs> you know, just, just a bit of a, a side note there. I think everyone understands this. I'm, I'm, just, I'm feeling like, you know, everyone here has a certain level of consciousness. Um, but, yeah, just warning. <laughs> Don't play <laughs> on your partner or your brother or sister or your mom or your dad or uh you know the, the guy who's selling the bread at the corner store you know don't don't experiment with anyone yeah. and and we <laughs> especially when it comes to here <laughs> and we probably do that anyway you know that's called projection so we are only human exactly <laughs> i know but exactly yeah yeah Beautiful. Wow. Well, Nikki, I'm uh, the cold swim, so I've got, <laughs> so the, the, the water is right here. So now I'm looking at where I can get in from a good spot because there, there is actually garbage is a problem in Turkey. I'm totally changing the subject here as I feel like we, we're going to be wrapping up soon and I love the fact that Nikki is doing these cold swims and she's inspiring me so much to do them. Um, and it's like, now there's no excuse. Now there's really no excuse. <laughs> Our property is like two minutes uh, away from the sea. Um, so there's some garbage and blah, blah, blah. There's this and that. So I'm trying to find a good spot to get in where a lot of that garbage doesn't come in. And of course, there's going to be a whole other day with my son where we're going to be picking up the garbage and cleaning. And maybe I'll start a community thing uh, with all the other uh, grandmas and uh, <laughs> yeah, 
mothers in the neighborhood um, to, to clean up the garbage. There are some people who are doing it anyway. Um, to make a long story short, I'm going to do it. So Good. one, can I, do I, can I ask you one question about the swimming? Okay. So now it's pretty warm here in Izmir. Um, I always love to change my bathing suit after I get out of the, the water, even if it's warm weather. Um, <clears throat> in a very cold environment, like, do you guys go out? You, you go somewhere else, right? You're not close to your home to do the swim. My question to you is, do you keep your cold bathing suit on all the way home? Is that healthy? Is that okay? What do you do? Do you wrap yourself up after you do the cold swim or do you take your bathing suit off and like get fully changed? We take everything off. Are you, are you open to answering this question on the Instagram? Yeah, no, that's fine. We, we take, uh, uh, when we go swimming, we are full in bathing suit because it has to be in daylight. So, and, and when it's, when it's yeah. dark, we, we are mostly skinny dipping. And when it's colder and colder, yeah. Uh, the most important thing is um, get dressed, but first talk. So your core gets warm first. So I always yeah. take, I, I, because of that reason, I don't wear a bathing suit, but a bikini. So I take off my top and I yeah. put on my shirt exactly. and then my, my sweater and my jacket and then the bottom. Yeah. Um, okay. With another okay. group, we bring some tea with us. So you can get something warm inside, and um, yeah, yeah I, I can I can send you some some videos on 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 uh, no, swimming. The question, I think, but the practical yeah, is to be as fast as you can, and you will get faster the when it gets colder. But first, talk and uh, um, something to on your a hat, the head. Yeah, right after getting out. And then when it's really cold, I notice that some of you also swim with the hat on as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay. All right. Health. See, this is the theme of health, right? Yeah. Putting my health first. Yeah. I've set aside for, for quite a few months now, I have morning health rituals, which is really great. I recommend everyone to incorporate that into their schedule and be consistent with it, whether it's like smoothies, um, you know, meditations, doing your yoga, whatever that is. I mean, this is not anything new. All your yoga teachers and health coaches and, you know, healthy living coaches will say the same thing. That's easy. Um, but again, all part of this letting go season really Focus on what's important to you and so um, cold. Just and and anchor that into your schedule. So yeah, cold. Yeah. Just to to remind everybody is good for grounding, releasing, clearing. And if you decide instead of cold showers to swim, bring a body, uh, a safety um, boy, and a body. Don't swim alone. If you really want to swim for a dip, it's probably fine in the ocean because it will, it will not go deep immediately. But always bring someone no, with yeah. you. Know, shower, yeah. Safety first. But in energy terms, it's for good for grounding, for uh, clearing, releasing, um, screaming, if you, <laughs> if you prefer that. <laughs> you know, you're there in the ocean. There's nothing but you and your swimming body. Go and um, do it. Uh, I can only uh, say, go for it. I'm with you. And let me know because, uh, yeah, I'm curious how you find it. You know, oh, also, as you speak, too, because I'm the architect and I design everything. And as you speak, I'm constantly designing. I'm going to create this beautiful um, outdoor tub, like a big, probably like a middle, metal tub. And I'm going to design, like, there'll be, like, banana trees and tropical trees and all kinds of, like, big, leafy uh, ar trees around it. So I'll, I can also do the cold dips in there as well. But, like, create, like, this beautiful zen garden around it and make it this world where you can actually view the stars. I, 
uh, when I'm waiting to see your, your, your sketches and, and the build of that you know, progress. Really nice. Yeah. Oh, go for it. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. All right, Nikki, this was a fantastic session. Um, I, I'm happy the internet works here well. I didn't feel that there was anything cutting out, so that's great. From now on, we'll be doing them from here. And uh, I look forward to our next, our next talk. Yeah, and if you have any questions, keep them coming. And if you want to work with us, just shoot an email and uh, we'll respond as soon as we can. And uh, yeah, see you in two weeks. Thank you, everyone. See you, everybody. Bye-bye. Great. Nice to see everybody, see everybody join. Bye.